the world of conspiracy theorists lose another one of their heroes. And then we meet a man who believes that not only was Kobe Bryant's death not an accident, but that Kobe Bryant is right now being uploaded into a massive computer taken from Saturn to become the Antichrist, today on Dead Rabbit Radio. everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day, too. I'm a little angry. A little angry, but we'll get to that in a second. First off, check out this new art. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? This art is from Smashers underscore 25. That's her Instagram handle. And if you're looking for any sort of vector artwork, any sort of graphic design stuff, hit her up. I love that Ash Black's logo he just made over the course of one night listening to the show has be, be dis- been dissected by other artists and reinterpreted. We had John from the Scar Group do his version. Now Smashers underscore 25 has hers. It's just amazing how this show's really grown. I really, really love you guys so much. Also, I found out that a group... I don't know why I didn't know this before. And I'm kind of disappointed in you guys. You guys didn't know this either. A group of rabbits is known as a fluffle. Well, what's up, fluffle gang? What's up, little fluffles? We'll see how long that sticks. Secondly, in other news, before we get started with the episode, this week is the end of season eight. By the end of the week, we're going to hit episode 400, guys. 400. That's amazing. Couldn't do it without the fluffles. Couldn't do it. Let me rub your little tummy, you little fluffle gang. Couldn't have done it without you guys. That's amazing. What that means is that every 50 episodes, I take a week off. So next week, I'm just going to do some reruns. My friend Sabine, she listens to the show, and she goes, I always listen to your current episode. Then I'll listen to one or two episodes back, because she just got into it about a month ago. This is a good way to catch up. If you haven't heard some past episodes, the best of week is a good way to do that. But thank you so much, Smashers underscore 25. Thank you, Fluffle Gang, for... (laughs) Again, we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, Thanks for your support, and we're going to be taking a break soon. But now we're not. Now I'm putting back on my angry eyebrows. I'm angry. Angry Jason. And I get angry every once in a while. Normally, it's a Friday episode, but I woke up this morning to this news. Mad Mike Hughes, flat earth conspiratorist, is that a word? Flat earth believer, and also the man who's very well known for building a rocket that he was going to climb inside. I think you know where this is going. Climbs inside of his rocket and shoot himself up so he could see that the world was really a disc and he was going to take all these pictures. Because, you know, airplanes have concave windows on them. So that's why the Earth looks like a circle, because the window's designed that way. Anyway, so he shoots himself on a rocket. <laughs> Not a ro- He's a self-styled or self-taught rocket scientist. I will say this, that's smarter than anything I could have ever done. So I applaud the fact that he taught himself rocket technology, because I couldn't do that. What I'm upset about is he's dead now. Sorry, I probably could have doled that news a little bit more. You're like, you were just holding your little pennant that said Mad Mike. You're like, oh, is this going to be awesome now? Sorry, if you liked the guy. I'm sure he was a great person. But he last time he did one of these, he launched himself up about 1,700 feet. And then the the parachutes come out of the rocket, and he slowly glides to Earth. Well, Well, this weekend, when his rocket took off, what they believe is that the packages prepare, like, holding the parachutes got ripped on the launch pad on, like, the... I can see that's the thing. At least this guy... I can't even describe the stuff this guy built. So he's definitely smarter than me in that regard. But the the parachute thingies got ripped, and then that means the parachutes themselves got ripped. So the rocket took off successfully, but it had nothing to stop the landing, and the rocket fell to Earth. And there were people there watching it. There were some journalists and supporters of his and things like that. So... That's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. And I feel really bad for him. I feel bad for his fluffle. I feel bad for his family. I feel bad uh, just all around. And so why are you angry, Jason? Why'd you put on your angry eyebrows for this story? Shouldn't this be a celebration of life? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do think that he was a smart dude and he was doing something that he loved. The problem is he died over a conspiracy theory that we all know is not true. Right? Like, shouldn't we be in agreement that this is not true? But he's dead now. 
because he believed that the Earth was flat. And I don't know. That's just kind of it's. You know, one of the things that I like about the show is that it brings like the fun back to conspiracy theories. It brings the fun back to the world of the paranormal. So many people take this stuff so seriously, and that's fine too, but then there's a limit. There's a difference between me joking about aliens, me beating up... That's not a joke, actually. I <laughs> would just, just lay out aliens. Whoa. But there's a difference between me joking about beating up aliens. Again, not a joke. There's a difference between people who are like, no, aliens are actually 100% real, They're, and then the people who believe that reptilians are taking over the planet... And then even then, a group of people is the reptilians are taking over the planet, therefore, I have to shoot my minister eight times in the head, which actually happened. And oddly enough, the minister survived, which is weird, which is weird. Kyle Odom was that guy. He was the shooter. Maybe we'll do an episode on him. It's really well known. That's why I haven't covered it yet. But there's that gradation there. So you can believe in Flat Earth all you want. And I'm allowed to laugh at you all I want, because I think it's a stupid conspiracy theory. And you can laugh at me, and we can have that enjoyment. But then when you die over it, it's just, it makes me mad. Makes me mad. So, Mad Mike Hughes, that's awesome you were doing your thing. It sucks that it ended so tragically. I wish that you had had many more launches and you had been able to observe the splendor of the curved earth and uh, come down and said, hey, you know, I was wrong. That would have been ama- that would have been the happiest ending of the story. But instead, a man's dead. And you know, what? I just thought about this. Oh, I almost can guarantee now. The cons- I don't live a lot in the flat Earth world because again, that's a real popular conspiracy theory. I just flirt in and out of it. I I studied it, studied it a long time ago. But I bet you, I should check this out. I bet you, there's a conspiracy theory. I bet you anything that people are saying that he went so high. That NASA took him out. It was, I bet you anything, they're already claiming it's a murder. I'll check that out and and we'll see if we find anything out. Let me write that down here because I'll forget otherwise. Because I'm a busy man. Where's my pen? And speaking of being busy, I'm going to take this moment out real quick. You know, since I'm going to be gone for a week, definitely listen to my uh, episodes, my classic episodes. I think you'll have a lot of fun with those. This weekend I've been watching, last weekend I watched a lot of movies. Uh, if you guys want to keep up on like the movies I'm watching, you can sign up with my Twitter account. A lot of times I'm tweeting about movies I've seen. But I saw a movie the other day called There Are Monsters. Highly recommend it. It's a great conspiracy horror movie. It's a great sci-fi horror movie. It's just a great horror movie. And it's interesting because it's a it's one long narrative, but it took the filmmaker five years to shoot it. And it came out in like 2013. It took him like five years to shoot it. And so there, it seems like a lot of little short stories connected together. So like, we'll have our heroes go into a supermarket. We'll have our heroes go to a dentist office. We'll have our heroes on a bus. You can tell like all of these were shot as almost like short. It was a really, really good horror movie. There are monsters. Check it out. Dead Rabbit recommends there are monsters. I'm not going to say anything else because I just recommend watching it. But let's go ahead, though, and move on to our next topic, our next story for the day. Now, our next story, our next story coming up, we're going not to a place, but to a mind. We're traveling into the mind of a man. Actually, no, I guess we'll go to a place. We're at a diner, because this, <laughs> this is easier narrative setup. We're now sitting at a diner across from a man. He's probably in his, I'm going to guess, late 20s, early 30s. And he's sitting there, and he's drinking coffee. His eyes are shifting from side to side, making us a little nervous, but it's in the middle of the day. We're sitting in a little diner in, let's say, Sedona, Arizona. I don't know. Somewhere where there is a road, because we need to make a quick getaway if these things turned bad. And he's sitting there, and he's drinking his coffee, and we're drinking our beverages of choice. And we go, so, sir, uh, we've heard that you have some information for us. And he's like, I do. I do. And can you reveal your name to us, sir? And he goes... Yes, yes. Well, I can give you my Reddit handle, he says with a grin. This is a good, this is a real dude, okay? I'm not making this guy up. This guy is not a narrative device. He's a real man. He's only known to the general public as Blueberries for Life. <laughs> blueberries for Life. Blueberries for Life. So, Blueberries. Can I call you Blueberries or should I call you Mr. For Life? Oh, no, Blueberries is fine. So, Blueberries. Now, what do I find so, other than that name? <laughs> being weird and actually it's the most normal thing that we're about to discuss i find it odd that someone who believes what we're about to talk to the main thing in his existence is blueberries 
Just just the fact that they exist. Not blueberry pie for life, not blueberry soda. Blueberry, just blueberries, right? Blueberries for life. He's sitting there across from us from the diner, and he goes, I have important information for you guys. You guys are true believers, right? And now our eyes are shifting from side to side. We're like, yeah, uh, we believe everything. And he's like, good, good, good. Pulls out his notebook. January 17th, Eminem drops music to be murdered by. I haven't heard that album. I haven't heard that album. Looked up some of the lyrics because I'm a boomer now. I didn't have time to actually listen to the album. I was like, yeah, that seems okay. He raps too fast for me now. I liked old Eminem. I like his first three albums. But then he just got faster and faster. I'm not into that. I know a lot of people are, though. So, I mean, he has his fans. January 26th, Kobe Bryant dies. While the Grammys are rehearsing at the Staples Center. Kind of like looking at each other. We're like, yeah, we know that he passed away. Is it important that the, they were practicing at the Staples Center, the Grammys? Oh, yeah, yeah. You see, the Staples Center is where he used to play basketball. So, but now they're doing like musical stuff there. And the music industry, and we're like, oh, great. It's one of these. And then he started, we're like, just don't go into the music industry stuff yet. Save that. He's like, okay, okay. January 17th, Eminem drops Music to be Murdered by his new album. January 26th, Kobe Bryant dies. Helicopter crash. January 31st, Lil Wayne drops the album Funeral, which I have listened to, and it's okay. Like, I was, I haven't listened to a Lil Wayne album since the Carter 3, and I, again, I think I just am a fan. Rap music evolves incredibly fast. Rock music, it goes pretty slow in the same rock band, unless they're Maroon 5, which I think they're more of a pop band now. They kind of slowly grow over time. Rappers, like, you can go, you can miss an album, and it's a completely different artist. It's, rap music goes super, super fast. Anyway, so I, I wasn't a huge fan of Lil Wayne's Funeral album. It is interesting, though, Hidden Code, if you take the album Funeral, or the album art for Funeral, you flip it upside down, it says Lil Wayne. It was interesting. And now at this point, you're looking at me in the diner, and you're like, dude, just let him finish his dumb conspiracy theory. This isn't Double XL Magazine. You're not Spin. Okay, okay. January 31st, Lil Wayne drops Funeral. February 2nd, Super Bowl 54 happens. And February 2nd, famously, was 02, 02, 2020. And it was the only date within 1,100 years that was a palindrome. And then he starts going off on all this stupid date stuff, which I'm sure you guys have run into. If you're into any of this conspiracy theory stuff, that day, and I think we did an episode on it too, that date was doomed, like something was supposed to be big was happened. Nothing happened, but... That's not changing Blueberry's mind about this. Because here's here's his take on Super Bowl 54. And he gets real close to us. We can smell the coffee on his breath. And then he says, quote, he actually says that word as well. The halftime show was a sex magic ritual to the black cube of Saturn. Now, he leans back in his chair, all smug. Because he's dropped the bomb. That Kobe Bryant's death is linked to the black cube of Saturn. You're perplexed because you have no idea what the Black Cube of Saturn is. Hopefully not. If you do, I think there's better uses of your time because I think the Black Cube of Saturn is one of the dumbest conspiracy... This is, this is the other thing that makes me mad about this episode. Black Cube of Saturn is one of the dumbest conspiracy theories I've come across. And I'm going to go over it as briefly as I can. The, this is what it is. The, on Saturn, there is a hexagonal storm. And basically, a hexagon, if you draw lines over it, it becomes a 3D cube. You can draw lines over anything and make anything. So right there, the logic behind it is dumb. There's a hexagonal storm on Saturn, and that, if you draw a little line over it, that's a cube. On Earth, you have a bunch of black cubes everywhere. You'll find these images everywhere. Where they're like, here's a black cube in Dresden. Here's a black cube in Brooklyn. Here's a black cube in Vermont. Here's a black cube in Berkeley. See anything similar? Yeah, there's four photos of black cubes. Apparently, there's some Jewish ritual where they wear little black cubes on their head. Now, let me say this for a second, because they're saying that they're worshiping the black cube. Let me say this for a second. When you think of something that Orthodox Jews wear on their heads, what do you think of? Do you think of the black cube, or do you think of the yarmulke? So again, this is why this gets me worked up. I'm not like super... I'm like, no, they don't like the yarmulke? The th- this is the problem with this conspiracy theory, is that if you point out the eight times, or someone will be like, there's 20 times, it doesn't matter. You can point to me the 20 different black cubes, 
in society, but you have to disregard every other thing in society that doesn't involve a black cube. And that's the problem with these conspiracy theories. This one's fairly recent. They've really tried making this to be like, thousands of years ago, they discovered the... Here's the thing. We didn't know there was a hexagonal storm on Saturn until fairly recently. So uh, how cavemen were worshipping the black cube on Saturn is beyond me. Also, apparently a wedding ring, putting the ring on the finger, is... Because of Jupiter, damn it, because of Saturn's rings. So that's your, but they didn't know there were rings around Saturn when we were putting rings on fingers. It, it, it's all backwards. It's all been created backwards, right? They're, they didn't know there was a hexagon. They didn't know there was a, a cube, sorry, on Saturn. They didn't know there were rings, but apparently people knew this way back when. And now I can point to the fact that in Spider-Man 2, apparently, there's a black cube. There's a list of movies. There's a list of movies that the black cube has been in. There's maybe like 20 of them. And it's like Spider-Man 2, Matrix Revolutions. Oh, and then they go, oh, and Avengers. Avengers, the cube. The cos- it's not black. So now it's just any cube possible. Also, one of the movies they listed that has a cube in it, the movie Cube. But oddly enough, not the three sequels. So what is going on? Basically, basically, this makes me so mad. And this is why. It is, and we've seen a lot of conspiracy theories like this. It's a conspiracy theory out of omission. So I can point to the few times the cube is there, but I have to ignore the fact that what's the major, and they point obviously to um, Mecca, where the people walk around the giant uh, black cube in the middle of Mecca, and they're like, they're, they're, no no joke, they walk around it the way the rings rotate around Saturn. They didn't know rings were around Saturn when they built Mecca. So, just really, re- there are multiple religions that don't have black cube things in it. Most famously, I don't think Jesus was had a black cube dropped on him. I'm pretty sure there's not a black cube in Buddhism or Zoroastrianism. I know I can't pronounce that one. Or really anything else, right? You can point to the few times there are black cubes and go, ah, it's proof that we're secretly being run by people who worship the black cube. Because I can show you a room from the United Nations that's a prayer and meditation room that has a black cube in it. First off, I don't know where that photo was taken. I don't know if it's called a prayer or meditation room. And if both of those are true, I don't care that there's modern art in a room where you're supposed to go and contemplate things. That du- If there was a black cube in every place of worship on the planet, and not just Spider-Man 2 or the Matrix Revelations or whatever, Revolutions, it doesn't matter, if every single movie had a black cube in it, and if there was a black cube in every single location of worship, and every financial district, and every capital, you might be onto something. If it was onto 50% of those locations, you might be onto something. 20? 20. And the lunatic I'm about to talk to you about, let's get back to blueberries for life. I think I vented long enough. And this extra long Jason Vince, I hate that. I really dislike that conspiracy theory. Because I think I dislike it for one of two reasons. For for two reasons. One, it's incredibly uncreative. It's really, really lame. Let's look at, and again, they're not even restricting it to black cubes anymore. Just any cube. Ice cubes, part of this. Actual ice cubes are part of it. Anyways, it's not just cu- not just black cubes anymore. It's any sort of cube. Cubics. Rubik's Cube? Mm. Be careful with those guys. It, it makes me mad because it's completely uncreative. It's basically anything that's a basic geometric shape is proof of this conspiracy. And two, I think it irritates me how fast it's growing. It's not as big as Flat Earth. It may not ever get as big as Flat Earth, but it's definitely bigger than stuff like Mountains used to be trees and things like that. It's growing. If you type in Black Cube of Saturn into Google, it's funny. You'll get a lot of results, and it will be the same photos over and over and over and over and over again. Let's get back to this lunatic at uh, the uh, coffee shop, though. That was my rant for the day. Oh, I don't know. I may go off on one again because this guy. So he says this. The halftime show was a sex magic ritual to the Black Cube of Saturn. On February... Th- I love this. This is his... Qu- this is an actual quote. He's trying to convince us that Kobe Bryant is going to be reconstructed as an AI. 
This is a quote. This is some of his proof here. On February 3rd, a photo surfaced from an airplane that had an article written about it. The picture was from the 29th. Unquote. What in the world does that mean? On February 3rd, okay, that's a date, I get it, a photo surfaced from an airplane? What airplane? What photo that had an article written about it? Where's the article? What are you talking about, you lunatic? And you go, Jason, you're being a little hard on this guy. You're being a little hard on blueberries, right? He's just posting on something, oh, wait till we get into this dude's backstory, okay? And then you'll see why I'm a little concerned about this guy. So he believes that Eminem releases an album about being murdered. Kobe Bryant dies while the Grammys are being practiced at his place of work. Lil Wayne does an album called Funeral. And then on February 3rd, some photo gets taken out of an airplane. That is all part of the conspiracy theory. Here's this quote. We're going back to his words here. This entire series of events I'm explaining is a ritual to the black cube of Saturn in order to bring Kobe, quote, back to life, unquote, through AI and present him to the world and tell us AI is the new way of life. This will be the Antichrist. Kobe died... On January 26, 2020. And as of this writing, it is 2-21-2020. And there are no funeral plans for him. That's not true. His funeral is held on February 7th. So right there, you didn't do the basic research to prove your point. And (laughs) at this point, you're kind of like putting your hand on my arm. You're like, Jason, we are at a diner. We are. I've never seen you this worked up, bro. Well, hey, listen, dude, okay, first off, okay, I'll move your hand off my arm, I'll put it on my knee, and then secondly, if you're trying to, con- let's say that you, you're trying to convince me that the world government has taken a dead basketball player and is going to, uh, of, of all people, of all people who died, Kobe, no offense against Kobe Bryant, but if Kobe Bryant's ghost walked in my apartment right now and told me that he was the way, the truth, and the light, I'm not going to start worshiping him. No offense again, Kobe, but I think you understand. It would take more than a basketball, or really anyway, Britney Spears ghost walking in my apartment right now and told me to start worshiping her. I wouldn't. And I love Britney Spears. I'd worship her while she was alive. But, which I actually might be even more creepy, but my point is, is that it's going to take more than a one of the most amazing basketball players of all time to convince me that AI is the way. Right? Anyways, it, it, get your basic facts right as well. He, he already had a funeral. He had a funeral two weeks before you wrote this stuff. After, And I'm going to spare you a ton of this. But after this, to prove himself, to prove his facts. And he ends it with the normal conspiracy theorist thing. I don't care if you believe me. You do care if we believe you. That's why you spent eight hours writing this. You know people aren't going to believe you, so you kind of put up that deflection thing. Fine, it's a psychological trick, whatever. He goes into a ton. The next... You can go through the show notes. The link will be there. But the next, I don't know, five, six paragraphs are just not numerology stuff, number games. And I'll read you this one. This is proof. This is proof. Get your calculators ready, guys. This will prove to you this madman's onto something. Quote, the score, okay, the score of the game. So the Super Bowl score was predetermined by the fact that the Black Cube Society, or the, say whatever they are, the Order of the Black Cube, the Black Cubians, they had preordained the actual score of the football game, which I'm sure a lot of 49er fans would agree with, at least that part of it. But the, the score has something to do with all of this. Quote, the score of the game when it finished... That would have been hilarious if he took the score like during like eight minutes before halftime, just an arbitrary number. The score of the game when it finished read San Francisco 20, Kansas City 31. 2 plus 0 equals 2. Thank you. 3 plus 1 equals 4. 24. Wait, what? Okay, so 2 plus 0 is 2 and 3 plus 1 is 4. So now we have the number 24. 2 times 4 is 8. Uh Uh-huh. Super Bowl 54. 5 plus 4 is 9. Kobe died 9 days after the ritual began, which is a famous... Oh, and this is... I, I can't believe I haven't gotten to this yet. So he does not, he believes that the Black Cube Society of Saturn and the Illuminati are one and the same, or the Illuminati work for him, or Illuminati are their goons, or the goons control them. Who knows? But he never uses the term Illuminati. He never uses the name Illuminati. He calls them throughout this, (laughs) throughout this 
post the Aluma Donkey. The Aluma Donkey, which I love, actually. I love that. Um, it doesn't rhyme. It doesn't make really any sense. P- D- donkey, it's funny. Donkey worshippers are actually a slang term for Christians way back in the day. Like, 38 AD. People refer to Christians as donkey worshippers because he rode into town on a donkey. I actually have a story coming up on that. There's an interesting little thing about that. but So, it's weird. I know that um, when I keep seeing him call him a Luma donkey, I do, because I read that story so recently, I keep associating that as a knock against Christians. So, And I know this guy's not smart enough to, to know that, but I, it throws me off. So, I'm thinking, is he also like mocking Christians? I don't think so. I think he's just trying to find a funny way to refer to the Illuminati. He could have called him the Illuminati, like not, boo, thumbs down. But anyways, Aluma Donkey, it's funny. He, it's my one life preserver in this sea of madness that when I was reading this thing. Anyways, uh, he refers to him as Aluma Donkey. So he says that if you add up the scores and do all this math stuff, 5 plus 4 is 9, and Kobe died 9 days after the ritual began. And you go, what about the 8? You said the score added up to 8. He, again, he goes on for 6 paragraphs, or 5 paragraphs, it doesn't matter. Wait, 5 plus 6 is 11, Uh uh-oh. 9, 11? So anyways, I mean, that's basically the nonsense that he goes through. He begins going through Kobe Bryant's jersey number and finding Bible verses that correlate with it. And, And out of some of them, they talk about two mountains. And Kobe Bryant's helicopter crash in the mountains. Yes. The spiritual history of the Jewish people predicted the fact that Kobe Bryant's helicopter wasn't going to fly right on 2020. Who f- who knew, guys? Who knew? I'm convinced now. You know what's funny? There's probably a pretty good chance that this show could have just become this if this had been the first episode I ever did. That it would have just been 400 episodes of me basically being... Just grumpy old J- old man Jason reviewing some conspiracy theories. But it takes a lot out of him. I'm, I'm sweating over here, honestly. Anyways, let's let's start wrapping this up. This is definitely going to be a long episode. I don't want to edit out a lot because I think a lot of this stuff is gold. And it's the end of the season. We haven't had a lot of long episodes this season. So here we go. This, this ends with this quote, right? His article ends with this quote. It could all be coincidence. So at least he's open to that. It could all be coincidence. Though, he he continues, though I know coincidences don't exist, as I was showing this on my very first shroom trip. Let's go back up and talk a little bit about blueberries for life. We've left the diner, and we're walking, and, and we're like, that guy's a lunatic. And I said, yeah, 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 he's a lunatic, but we're just getting to the tip of the shroom. Because this guy's not only an avid drug user, right? When I went to look to see if he had any more rantings about this on Reddit, any other conspiracy theories, none that I could find. Every other post on Reddit was about him tripping on some sort of hallucinogen, okay? Hey, man, I just took eight ounces of Duzok, Blook, and, you know, I'm tripping out. I'm seeing blueberries everywhere, man. Blueberries connect us all. Now, I mean, you're like, Jason, you're not going to start bagging on this guy for doing hallucinogens. Well, no, not necessarily. But let's let's keep. I, I will say it kind of makes your arguments a little less valid when you didn't discover them because you overheard a police officer and a governor talking about rigging an election. You overheard them because a clockwork elf appeared out of your left eyeball and whispered it into your nostril. I I just that's just me. But what he does, the type of drugs he does, I really don't care about unless. Let's find out a little bit about this guy. Here's some quotes. Okay, so I've been awakening rapidly for the last seven months. I meditate several times a day, and I've seen a lot of unexplained shit. I've also done my fair share of psychedelics. And then he goes on. And that's actually how he starts off. So he lets us know right up the front that this dude's tripping 24-7. Now, when someone says they've been awakening rapidly for the last seven months, I had a feeling for what was going on, and you may too. But let's continue and move on down this Reddit post. I have abilities, he says. I always had them. But I've ignored them since I was a teenager about 16 years ago. Yeah, remember when you had mutant powers? Remember when you had quote-unquote abilities? And you're just like, nah, I'm not going to deal with those. But anyways, apparently he's too good for his mutant powers. Mutie, go home. Continue this quote here. But back to his quote. Referring to his gifts. But they are rapidly increasing. 
These last few days with these planet alignments, it's been crazy. The tugging and pulling of my spirit by the sun has been so strong. I felt like I was going to... Now, this is where I thought, I think this guy might have developed schizophrenia. And I was like, he's talking about he's had these abilities since he was a teenager. And in the last seven months, they've been rapidly awakening. And he's feeling like he's just so ecstatic and he's taking all these drugs. And that's what I was saying. I think I know what's going on and you might too. It almost feels like he has some sort of mental disorder that's rapidly overtaking him. Delusional thinking to say the least. Because if you... I encourage you to go to the show notes and look... Okay, and I want to say this. Don't harass this guy. I'm not telling you guys to harass this dude or nothing like that. But if you want to see like how someone can just spin what... I mean, I'm sure all that math took him hours to do. And I'm sure not only was he happy to do it the whole time, but his mind was blowing every time a math thing. And again, with the math, it's the black cube. It's all a conspiracy of omission. Any math formulas that don't match the conspiracy you're looking for, you simply disregard. What was the daily attendance of the... St- you know what? I'm not even going to get into that because I could go off on a whole other rant about number stuff. But anyways, the point is, is that this guy might have some sort of mental issue. Let's go back to this quote here, because this is this is really the main reason why I'm so fired up about this, other than the fact that it's a stupid conspiracy theory, and it's a waste of time um, for anyone to believe in it. Other than those things, back to this quote. These last few days with these planet alignments, it's been crazy. The tugging and pulling of my spirit by the sun has been so strong, I felt like I was going to fly a few times while driving. Next line. Now, I'm a truck driver by trade. So this guy we've been talking about this whole time, who spends all his time on Reddit talking about doing hallucinogens, who believe, who's so high that he believes that the order of album releases tell him that Kobe Bryant is going to appear in a computer. His little face is going to appear on everyone's smartphones, and he's going to be like, hello, everyone. He believe, and he's driving an 18-wheeler. Down your street. Doing math. Doing math equations while he's trying to steer. Tripping balls all the time. Now, he does say he usually only microdoses. Dude, you're dry. I remember when I was in hell, when I was in a driver's class way back in the day, it was like, would have been like 1990. It's a sophomore in high school. I remember I was always. The combination of the jerk slash quote unquote cool kid. I thought I was cool. It wasn't that cool, but I was a jerk. I remember I was sitting in the back of class because I never sat in the front and we were going over driver's ed stuff. It was all these rules of the road. And I remember just kind of sitting there leaning back and the teacher's going over all this stuff and I raised my hand and I'm like, dude, all these rules, when are we supposed to have fun? And the kids in laugh class, and that teacher turned beat ready, goes, Do you want a driver of an 18 wheeler having fun on the road? And I just sat there, and I'm like, yeah, kind of. Because I was a jerk, right? I was a jerk. I didn't say yeah, kind of, super loud, just enough for the kids next to me. But the initial question I asked in front of the whole class. And as an adult, I think, I still laugh at that story. But as an adult, I think, yeah, you don't want someone to have an 18-wheeler be having fun, popping wheelies. You definitely don't want them tripping on hallucinogenics, thinking about the black cube. Let's go on with this quote. Now, I am a truck driver by trade, and I meditate in my truck every morning. Please let it be parked, bro. Back to the quote. I am su- I love this part. This part. Remember those headmasters from Transformers, the old school Transformers? The head was actually a separate little tiny guy action figure that you'd transform in the head, and you'd put it on top of the robot. So it was like man and machine teamed up. That's real life now. So at least I got this, because I love Transformers. At least this guy might be an actual headmaster. Back to this quote. I'm super connected to my truck in a strange way. I feel other vehicles when they are around me. That's, again, dude, just use your eyes and the brake pedal. Don't feel out the universe to whether or not you're scraping a family of four off the freeway. I feel other vehicles when they are around me. I feel this. I love this. I feel the pressure washer on the truck. Spraying down with the pressure washer. I feel the pressure washer on the truck in my forehead. In the corresponding part as my face is the front of the truck. And the back is the back. 
I know, super weird, right? Unquote. Yes, that is something that you should... If I started feeling the intense pressure of a pressure washer anywhere in my head, I'm going to see a medical professional. I'm, I, I'm definitely going to be a little concerned if I'm spraying it on the front of my truck and it feels like my face is being caved in by 50 pounds per square inch of water. Now, I, maybe he just feels a tickle. Maybe he feels the mist on his face from the water splashing off, and he's like, oh my god, this is... What is going on? I'm, 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 I'm a little concerned about him if he ever gets in a car accident or loses his job. Then what does he do? He's like, no, my face! And someone else is driving off. No, no, no! Wash it in the gentle cycle! He wakes up. His face has all got, got a bunch of little dents in it from rocks and stuff. I mean, like, this guy's nuts, right? This isn't just me. This guy's totally nuts. And it's scary. Because, again, this is this is really how I have to wrap this up. Because I can go on for another hour about how my feelings on this whole thing. But the episode can't go that long. Here's my feelings about the whole thing. You can believe in the black cube of Saturn, okay? I have no problem with that. And, and you shouldn't care what I think about that either, right? Every, I have weirdo conspiracy beliefs. I just have weirdo beliefs in general. Everyone has weirdo beliefs in general. It's not a big deal. When you are driving an 18-wheeler, don't do hallucinogenics. I think that's a fair thing. I think we can all agree on that, right? That That's that's pretty simple. That's a rule of the road. It's a literal law. It's not, even, it's not even something we have to agree on. It's something that state legislatures have passed into law. But I think this guy is so ingrained in this conspiracy that I'm not even really worried about arguing the conspiracy with him. If I met this guy in real life... I'd be more worried about his well, his health, and my health. He's driving an 18-wheeler, but his health, too, right? And he's so deep, he's so deep, that unless there's some sort of true breakthrough, any help rendered to him, I believe, will just seem like it's part of the conspiracy theory. If a bunch of you guys go to his Reddit page and you're like, hey, you're on this podcast, he's going to take it as... The conspiracy is true. I'm being ridiculed for revealing the secret of the Black Cube of Saturn. If someone approaches him and says, Hey, um, I saw this Reddit post and you seem to be going through some issues. Would you like some counseling? They're onto him. The Black Cube of Saturn people are onto him. It's an interesting way. We're going to wrap this story up like this because Mad Mike, Mad Mike, the guy we talked to first, the man who built the rocket to prove that the Earth wasn't really flat, he had an interesting quote at the end of this article that I read about him. He says, my story really is incredible. It's got a bunch of storylines. The garage built thing, in reference to the rocket. I'm an older guy. It's out in the middle of nowhere, plus the flat earth. So he's just kind of talking about how his life seems to be quite unique. Seems to be having fun in this moment. The quote continues, the problem is it brings out all the nuts also. People questioning everything. It's the downside of all of this. So here's a guy who believes that the Earth is flat, that NASA is lying to him, world government is lying to him. I don't know if he believed that they were covering it up to cover up proof of God, which is kind of the standard flat Earth thing. Some people believe they're just covering it up as a method of control. But he believed that. But he would get people, he would be approached by people who believed in things even more insane than flat Earth. Monkeys don't exist. The color orange is satanic. Things like that. Album releases, Grammy shows, football scores, Bible verses, all pointing the path that the black cube of Saturn, which is an artificial intelligence on Saturn, is going to turn Kobe Bryant into an artificial intelligence that's going to convince all of us to worship the black cube. Is 100% more insane than Flat Earth. There's no rocket test to prove that that conspiracy theory is true or false. And that's what makes it dangerous. People who believe in this theory have no other way to prove whether or not it's true or false than by taking action against this group of black cube worshippers. Hopefully nothing happens. Hopefully Blueberries for Life wakes up out of his awakening and just levels out, or if needed, get some professional help. Hopefully his story does not end as tragically as Mad Mike Hughes. But only time will tell. 
DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash DeadRabbitRadio. Twitter is at DeadRabbitRadio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. Peace.